dear students today's topic is solution which is the second topic of your syllabus in the chemistry plus two second year science i myself today will teach you solution what is solution solution is a homogeneous mixture of solute and solvent or mixture of two or more components that will form the homogeneous mixture of two or more components is a solution homogeneous mixture means the composition and properties are uniform throughout the mixture generally the component which is present in the largest quantity is called a solvent solute may be any of the one components any components solvent determines the physical state in which solution exists one or more components present in the solution other than solvent called solutes but in today we will go to the binary solution binary solution means only one solute and solvent will there that is it consisting of two components so depending on the state of the solvent will decide what type of solution is this depending on the state of the solute and solvent we have the nine types of solution gaseous solutions in which gas is the solvent and solute is also gas that is mixture of oxygen and nitrogen similarly liquid solute gas solvent that one example is chloroform mixed with nitrogen gas solid is the solute when it is gaseous solutions and camphor in nitrogen camphor is solid, solid state solid substance similarly liquid solution gas in liquid that is oxygen dissolve in water that is dissolve oxygens liquid in liquid that is ethanol dissolve in water that is your liquid liquid solution solid liquid solid liquid may be any one sodium chloride potassium chloride chloride glucose sucrose whatever you can add to the water or liquid that will form a liquid solutions then solid solutions are also of three types where gas is solute solvent is solid that is solution of hydrogen in palladium mostly the metallic hydride metallic uh, catalyst used in organic reactions reduction reaction solid solutions liquid and solid amalgam mercury in sodium sodium amalgam is used as a reducing agent in many organic compounds then solid solid copper dissolved in gold these are generally alloy alloys are solid solid solutions next what is solubility we will go to the solubility solubility is a substance solubility of a substance is it maximum amount that can be dissolved in a specified amount of solvent and at a specified temperature it depends on the nature of the solute and solvent and temperature pressure solubility of a solid in the solution depends on four factors one is temperature pressure nature of the solvent and nature of the uh, and nature of the solute every solid do not dissolve in a given liquid it is observed that generally the polar solutes dissolves in polar solvent non polar solute dissolve in non polar solvent you can take the example of you can take the example of this is your sodium chloride will go to the sodium chloride sodium chloride is dissolved in water sodium chloride dissolve in water this is solid dissolve in water but naphthalene if you take it is not soluble in water this is insoluble but naphthalene is soluble in benzene in organic solvent so all the solutes do not dissolve in all types of solvent it is the non polar will get soluble in non polar solvent while polar get soluble in polar solvent the solubility uh, of a solid depends on the intermolecular force of attraction between the two components so that is there is a pore verb we call like dissolves like that means polar will get dissolved in polar solvent non polar will get dissolved in non polar solvent the solution we can now go to the saturated solution what is saturated solution saturated solutions means no more solute can goes into solution no more solute can goes into solution at a given temperature and pressure in a to form a saturated solution similarly unsaturated in which more amount of solute can get dissolved in a solvent at same temperature that is called uh, your unsaturated there is another one is which is not mentioned in the slide that is super saturated 
super saturated means more amount of solute is present in the solvent that is more than the amount required to prepare a solu saturated solution. Now, what are the different factors that influence the solubility of a solid? The first comes it is temperature. If the dissolution process when sodium chloride is added to water, this is called dissolution. In the dissolution process, if it is an endothermic reaction that is heat is absorbed, then the solubility increases with a rise in temperature. And if it is an exothermic reaction, then heat will be evolved. In that reaction, solubility will decrease with increase of temperature. Generally, pressure has no effect on the solubility of a solid in a solvent, because solids and liquids are highly incompressible. They cannot be compressed by application of pressure. That is solubility of a gas in liquid. Next, we will go to solubility of a gas in a liquid. Many gases dissolve in water. Oxygen dissolves only to a small extent in water that form the dissolved oxygen, which is the reason why the aquatic life remain in water. On the other hand, hydrogen chloride is soluble, highly soluble in water. If you take the ammonia also highly soluble in water, if you take ammonia is highly soluble in water, HCl is highly soluble in water, but oxygen, nitrogen all these gases is very little soluble in water. The solubility of a gas greatly affected by the pressure and temperature, the solubility of gases increases with increase of pressure. If you increase the pressure, the solubility will increase. To establish a relationship, quantitative relationship between the amount of the gas dissolved and the amount of solvent, there is a law given by Henry. Henry was the first man to suggest the quantitative relation between the pressure and solubility of a gas in a solvent. So, that is called Henry's law. We will go to the Henry's law. Henry's law. Henry's law states that the partial, this is very important for the examination point of view. The law states that the partial pressure of a gas in vapor phase is proportional to the bowl fraction of the gas in the solution. That is the partial pressure. Suppose you will dissolve, you take water on this, then add oxygen gas. What amount of gas will get dissolved on the solvent that will be determined from the pressure. Pressure has a profound effect on the solubility of a gas in a liquid. Henry suggested that the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the mole fraction of the solute. That is uh, your P is equal to k h into x. P is the partial pressure and x is the mole fraction of the solute and k is called Henry constant, k is called Henry's constant. This law was given by Henry. According to him, the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute, mole fraction of the solute. The equation is written as P is equal to k h and x. You can look into the graph, what is the, what is the relationship between partial pressure and mole fraction. If you plot a graph between partial pressure and mole fraction, then we will get a straight line passing through the origin. If you plot a graph that indicate that with increase in mole fraction, the partial pressure decrease. This is the graph. You take on this side pressure and this side mole fraction. So, we will get a straight line passing through the origin. We will get a straight line passing through the origin. K h depends on K h depend, depends on the nature of the solute, amount of the solute present. K h depends on the nature and the nature of the gas present. Different substances have got different k h value. Higher the value of k h at a given pressure, lower is the solubility of the gas, because p is equal to k h into x. So, if you keep p, p constant, then k h is inversely proportional to x. That means, if you increase the sol solute amount, then the k h value will decrease. That is, higher value of k h at a given pressure, the is lower is the solubility of the gas in the liquid. For example, if you take in case of nitrogen and oxygen, the vapor pressure decreases or the KH value increases with increase in temperature indicating that the solubility of gases with decrease of temperature. <coughs> this is why the aquatic life wants more comfortable in the cold water than in hot water, because the hot water the temperature is high. 
So, as the temperature increases the cage the solubility will decrease. Then there is a large number of application of the Henry's law. The first is the in while carbon dioxide dissolve in soft drinks and soda water which you use always you take soft drinks that uh, the bottle is sealed under high pressure. Why the bottle is high under high pressure? As the pressure increases the solubility of carbon dioxide increases in the cold drinks and in soda water. Scuba divers generally they take generally if they if you, if you will take the air if you will take the air uh, for respiration then what will happen the nitrogen present in the different gases nitrogen oxygen uh, and other gases will get will get dissolved in water water uh, dissolved so when the sea diver will go look to the bottom of the sea the, uh, the all these gases will get dissolved in blood and when it he will go off the blood <coughs> the all these gases will go out of the blood, but excepting nitrogen which cannot which forms bubbles in the blood. As a result the uh, respiration problem will occur that is called your bending the disease is called bending. The bending will occur when the oxygen will not able to go away from the blood the respiratory problem will arise that is called bending. To avoid bending, bending the divers generally take helium up to 11 percent then nitrogen then oxygen oxygen 38 percent something like that will be taken and nitrogen is there 72 percent or something like this is around 6 52 percent I think 52 point something. So, the sea diver always take the mixture of gases because the mixture of gases nitrogen is very less amount. So, it will not create any problem for the sea divers next the third application is at a high altitude the partial pressure of oxygen is very less than that in the ground level. This leads to the low concentration of the oxygen in the blood tissues people living at high altitude or climbers low blood oxygen causes climbers to feel weak unable to think properly. So, this disease is called anoxia this disease is called anoxia generally is, is seen in high altitude region anoxia this disease occur. So, these are the applications of the Henry's law, these are the applications of the Henry's law. Effect of temperature solubility of a gases in liquids decreases with rise in temperature as the temperature increases the solubility will get decrease. So, we can carry out a problem for Henry's law which comes in the examination very simple problem. The problem is given in the slide. So, the partial pressure of nitrogen dissolved in water is 0 0.987, the partial pressure is 0 0.987 bar and the k h is given to you, k h is equal very simple 2 marks question, k h is your 76.48, then what will be the mole fraction. So, we have the formula p is equal to k x k h into x. So, x will be equal to p by k h that will be 0 0.987 divided by that is your 76.48. So, this will be the answer this will be the answer the mole fraction you can find out very easily by applying this equation this is a very simple problem which will come in the examination as two mark question. Now, we will go to vapor pressure what is vapor pressure vapor pressure is the vapor pressure kahaku kahante what is vapor pressure vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by the vapors of the liquid over the liquid phase under equilibrium condition and a given temperature suppose you will take suppose you will take a liquid and that will the liquid molecule will get evaporate condensation will also occur the condensation and vaporization will occur a time will reach when the condensation become equal to the rate of vaporization at that stage the vapor exert certain pressure that pressure is called your vapor pressure taku vapor pressure kahanti vapor pressure taku kuha jaye factors those influence the vapor pressure is temperature number one temperature as the temperature increases the vapor pressure increases it also depends on the nature of the solvent nature of the solvent also decides the amount of as the temperature will increase the vapor pressure of the solution uh, liquid will increase. In pure liquid the entire surface 
So, temperature and vapor. Now, we will go to when a non volatile solute will be added to the solution, what will happen? If you add a non volatile solute to a solvent, what will happen? If a non volatile solute will be added to the solvent, the vapor pressure will decrease. Suppose, this is the pure solvent and this is solution. Let it be water plus sodium chloride and this one is only water. So, if you add some non volatile solute to the water, the vapor pressure will decrease. Why it decreases? In case of pure solvent, the surface is occupied by water molecule only. So, they will evaporate easily. But here what happens some of the space, some of the space is occupied by the solute particle, sodium chloride, sodium plus and chloride minus they will occupy the surface area. As the surface area is less number of molecules are present, so the vapor pressure will decrease, the number of water molecule will be very less. So, this is we are discussing about the vapor pressure. The vapor pressure increases with increase of temperature. I have already told you, Kohichi temperature bodhele vapor pressure bodhivo. In a pure liquid, the entire surface is occupied by the entire surface is occupied by the solvent molecule, but in case when you add a non volatile solute like sodium chloride, sugar or something like that, then what will happen? The vapor pressure will decrease. Why the vapor pressure is decreasing? The vapor pressure is decreasing because some of the solute molecules will get present on the surface of the solvent. As a result, less number of solvent molecule will get evaporate. As less number of solvent molecule get evaporate, the vapor pressure will be less. To describe this one, Raoult gives a law that is called Raoult's law. We will go for Raoult's law. What is Raoult's law? Raoult's law can be stated as the vapor pressure of a solvent in a solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent. That is, whenever you add a non volatile solute to the solute to the solvent, the vapor pressure decreases. The decrease in vapor pressure or the vapor pressure of the solvent in a solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent. That is, the Raoult's law if if P 1 is the pressure exerted by vapor pressure, P 1 is the vapor pressure of the solvent in solution and P 1 0 is the P 1 0 is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent of the pure solvent. And if x2 is the mole fraction of the solvent of solvent, then according to Raoult's law, P1 is proportional to x1. P1 is proportional to x1. That is, or P1 is equal to P10 x1. This is your Raoult's law. This is the Raoult's law. Now, we will go to derive the Raoult's law. How the Raoult's law can be derived? Derivation of Raoult's law. Derivation of the Raoult's law. P 1 is uh, already from the according to Raoult's law. We have P 1 is directly proportional to x 1 that is mole fraction of the solvent. Then P 1 0 is the proportionality constant. P 1 0 into x 1. This p 1 by p 1 0 will be equal to x 1. This is the derivation of the Raoult's law. How can you derive it? it will come in the examination state and derive the Raoult's law. So, this is p 1 1 minus p 1 by p 0 p 1 0 p 1 0 is equal to x 1 minus x 1. 
1 minus x 1. That should be <coughs> or p 1 0 minus p 1 by p 1 0 is equal to x 1 a 1 minus x 1 that is equal to x 2 x 2 is the mole fraction of the solvent x 2 is the mole fraction of solute sorry mole fraction of solute p 1 0 minus p 1 is the lowering in vapor pressure and p 1 0 minus p 1 by p 1 this one is called a relative lowering in vapor pressure this one is a relative lowering in vapor pressure now, the Raoult's law can also be stated in another way that is whenever a non-volatile solute is added to a solvent, is added to a solvent the vapor pressure decreases, the vapor pressure of the solvent in the solution is directly proportional, lowering in vapor pressure is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute that is relative lowering in vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of the solute. This is your Raoult's law this is your Raoult's law. Now, Raoult's law for volatile solute, this is non volatile for applicable to non volatile solute and generally this Raoult's law is applicable when the solution is dilute. For dilute solution the Raoult's law is applicable. For a volatile solute if the solvent contain a volatile solute then solvent contain a volatile solute then the partial pressure of the component in the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction. So, if x 1 p 1 is the vapor pressure partial vapor pressure of the solvent of component 1 you can write not solvent component 1 and x 1 is the partial vapor pressure uh, sorry x 1 is the mole fraction of the component 1 mole fraction of the component 1 1 then then p 1 will be equal to p 1 0 x 1 each component will have a vapor pressure that is equal to the vapor pressure of the solvent in the pure state into mole fraction. So, if there will be another component p 2 will be equal to p 2 0 x 2. So, this is your Raoult's law for a volatile solute, this is Raoult's law for in the examination you have to write you have to see what type of solute, solute is given whether it is non volatile or it is volatile. If it is volatile you will write this one p 1 is equal to p 1 0 x 1 p 2 is equal to p 2 0 x 2. If it is a non volatile solute then you will write that equation of which we have earlier dis derived. Jota agurum derivation kathalu say yuta kathame lekhivo. Some probable questions on this portion is very simple given example of solid solution in which the solute is a gas. I have given you all the types of solutions example state and explain Henry's law some a simple numerical will be there which I have discussed then state Raoult's law and derive the Raoult's law then vapor pressure what is the vapor pressure and what are the different factors that influence vapor pressure. Now, we will go to liquid liquid solution in liquid liquid solution in liquid liquid solution the classification is either it is ideal or it is non ideal either it is ideal ideal solution or it is non ideal solution. Liquid liquid solution you take ethanol and methanol, benzene and toluene, you can add benzene and toluene that will constitute benzene and toluene, benzene and toluene will constitute a liquid liquid solution. Similarly, you can have the ethanol and water that is liquid liquid these are all liquid liquid solution. The liquid liquid solutions are classified into two types. One is ideal solution, the other is non ideal solution. What is ideal solution? The solution in which obeys the Raoult's law, the solution which obeys the Raoult's law over all range of concentration, which depends that is ideal solution, the solution which 
obeys the Raoult's law, which obeys the Raoult's law, all range of concentration, all range of concentration. If the solution obeys Raoult's law, then we will call it ideal solution. In ideal solution, we will have some two, two will have another two condition to become ideal that is the delta H mix, delta H mix is equal to 0 and the delta V mix is equal to 0. That is on mixing there will be no enthalpy change, when we are adding ethanol and water there will be no change in enthalpy, then it will be an ideal solution. Similarly, the, there will be no change in volume, if you take 1 liter of water and 1 liter of ethanol that must be 2 liter, if that will be 2 liter then the change in volume is equal to 0. So, for a ideal solution it must obey the Raoult's law at under all condition, it must have delta H mixing that the enthalpy of mixing is equal to there is 0 that is there will be no change in the enthalpy. So, the enthalpy change havani, volume change havani, and the Raoult's law ko mele manu thubo, taku kua jiva kona, that will be called the ideal solution. You can give the example of ideal solution I have already told you benzene plus toluene or ethanol plus methanol this is ideal solution. Already, I have already told you what is ideal solution. Ideal solution the solution which obey the Raoult's law delta V mix is equal to 0, delta H mix is equal to 0. Now, we will go for the non ideal solution. Non ideal solution are those solution which uh, the non ideal solutions are those solutions which do not obey the non ideal solution the solution which do not obey solution which do not obey the Raoult's law at any concentration. It does not obey the Raoult's law, the non ideal solution does not obey the Raoult's law and also it does not it, it the enthalpy change on mixing is not equal to 0 delta V mix that is volume change will be there. In a non ideal solution there is volume change, there is enthalpy change and it do not obey the Raoult's law at any concentration that is non ideal solution. We can give the non ideal so example of non ideal solution is cyclohexane, cyclohexane and acetone, cyclohexane and acetone chloroform and acetone, chloroform and acetone that is the non ideal solution do not obey the Raoult's law, delta H mixing is equal to 0 that is when the two liquids are mixed the enthalpy change will occur and delta mix V is also not equal to 0 that is delta V that is the volume change will occur. You can take the example of cyclohexane plus acetone and chloroform and acetone. Another thing is the agiotropic mixture in liquid solution we will come across agiotropic mixture. Agiotropic mixture, this is the mixture which have same composition in liquid phase as well as solid phase. and it has a constant boiling point. Constant boiling point. And cannot be separated. Separated. 
So, the azeotropic mixture is the mixture which have same composition in both the phase liquid phase as well as vapor phase and the and it, it has a constant boiling point and cannot be separated by fractional distillation or can have the other method to separate the mixture. So, now we will go to the collegiative property. What is collegiative properties? We will go to the collegiative property. What is collegiative property? Collegiative properties are those properties of the solution that depends only on the number of solute particle present. It does not depends on the nature of the solute. That is collegiative property is the property that depends only on the number of solute particle present, but not on the nature of the solute present. This is derived from a Latin word that is co means together and ligand means the bind. So, collegiative property. We can have four different collegiative properties which we will discuss. Number one is relative lowering in vapor pressure. Do number elevation in boiling point depression in freezing point then fourth one is osmosis. So, we have four collegiative property in our course number one is relative lowering in vapor pressure, number two is elevation in boiling point, number three depression in freezing point and number four is your osmosis and osmotic pressure. These collegiative properties does not depends on the nature of the solute, it depends only on the number of solute particle present in the solution. First we will go to the first number that is number one relative lowering in vapor pressure. What is relative lowering in vapor pressure? The relative lowering we have from the Raoult's law. From the Raoult's law, we have whenever a non volatile solute is added to a solvent, the vapor pressure decreases, and according to him, the vapor pressure of the vapor pressure of the vapor pressure of the solvent in solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute from this is relative lowering in vapor pressure relative in vapor pressure we will go one by one relative lowering in vapor pressure according to raoult's law the vapor pressure of a solution solvent in a solution decreases and the vapor pressure of the solution p1 is equal to p10 x1 this is from raoult's law this is from raoult's law now we can have P 1 by P 1 0 is equal to x 1. P 1 0 is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So, we can write this one delta P will be equal to P 1 minus sorry P 1 0 minus P 1 that is P 1 0 minus P 1. So, we can write this equation in this format 1 minus P 1 by P 1 0 will be equal to 1 minus x 1. So, the one we have we have subtracted it from 1 because the mole fraction of two components is equal to 1 that is why I have extracted. So, this p 1 0 minus p 1 divided by p 1 0 is equal to x 2, x 2 is the mole fraction of the solute, x 2 is the mole fraction of the solute. Now, p 1 0 minus p 1 this term p 1 0 minus p 1 is the lowering in vapor pressure p 1 0 minus p 1 is equal to is called lowering in vapor pressure while p 1 0 minus p 1 divided by p 1 0 the left side of the e equation is called relative lowering in vapor pressure that is relative lowering in vapor pressure is equal to mole fraction of the solute is equal to mole fraction of the solute. So, uh, if n 1 number of moles of the solute is dissolved in n 2 moles of the solvent. Suppose n 1 moles of solute is dissolved in 
n1 n2 moles of solute moles of solute dissolve in n1 moles of solvent then we have p10 minus p1 divided by p10 is equal to x2 that will be equal to n2 divided by n2 divided by n1 plus n2 n1 plus n2 this is the relative lowering in vapor pressure but if w1 and w2 are the molar mass of the solute and solvent suppose, suppose m1 molar mass of molar mass of solvent and m2 is the molar mass of solute molar mass of solute w1 is the w1 is the w1 is the mass of w1 is the mass of mass of solvent w2 is the mass of solute then we can write this equation in another form we can write this equation in another form minus p1 divided by p1 0 is equal to n2 by n1 plus n2 that will be equal to w1 w2 by m2 divided by w1 by m1 plus w2 by m2 this is the relative lowering in vapor pressure w1 is the mass of the solute uh, solvent w2 is the mass of the solute so in a dilute solution in a very dilute solution n2 is very much less than n1 in very dilute solution n2 is very much less than n1 in that case what will happen we, we neglect neglect n2 in the denominator if i will neglect this one then p10 minus p1 divided by p10 will be equal to w2 by m2 divided by w1 by m1 this is equal to, mm -hmm. this will be w1 by m1 so if we we'll arrange this one p10 minus p1 divided by p10 will be equal to w2 into m1 divided by w1 into m2 determining the relative lowering vapor pressure from the experiment and knowing w w1 w2 and m2 we can calculate what is m1 we can calculate what is m1 m1 can be calculated from this that is delta p by p10 is equal to w2 m1 w1 m2 then m1 will be equal to will be equal to w2 w1 into m2 delta p divided by p10 into w2 or m2 will be equal to m1 into p10 into w2 divided by w1 into delta p by knowing this one you can calculate m2 the mass of the solute we can calculate the mass of the solute from this expression you can calculate the mass of the solute if you know the delta p that is change in lowering in vapor pressure w1 is the mass of the solvent m1 is the mass of the uh, molecular mass of the solvent p10 is the vapor pressure in the pure state w2 is the mass of the solvent if you know all these things you can calculate what is the 
molecular mass of the solute. The molecular mass of the solute can be calculated from this. The relative lowering in vapor pressure is the relative lowering in vapor pressure is a qualitative property because it depends only on the number of solute particle present. So, by knowing this one you can calculate what is m 2. The relative lowering in vapor pressure how to use the determine the molecular mass of the solute we have uh, the w 1 molar mass of the solvent m 1 molar mass of the solvent w 2 mass of solute molar mass of solute m 2. So, now putting all these in the expression putting all these in the expression will have putting all these in the expression will have uh, p g p 1 0 minus p 1 divided by p 1 0 is equal to w 2 by m 2 divided by w 1 by m 1. If I will put p 1 minus p 1 0 minus p 1 as a delta p, p 1 0 minus p 1 is a delta p that is lowering in vapor pressure and p 1 0 will be equal to w 2 w 2 by w 1 into m 2 this will be the expression. So, from this m 2 will be equal to m 2 will be equal to w 2 m 1 into p 1 0 divided by w 2 into w 2 into delta p w 1 into delta p. So, this is the formula to calculate the molar mass of a solute by using the relative lowering in vapor pressure method. So, you know the w 2 that is the weight of the weight of the solvent m 1 w 2 is the weight of the solute m 1 molar mass of the solvent p 1 0 the vapor pressure in the pure state of the solvent w 1 is the weight of solvent delta p is the lowering in vapor pressure. Now, we will carry out a numerical, we will carry out a numerical based on this very simple numerical will ask in the question in the board examination. So, now we will go for a problem that is when you will go for a problem you first look into what are the data is given, kana kana data de you will go into what are the data is given. The vapor pressure of pure benzene at a certain temperature that means P 1 0 is given to you 0 0.850 then what they were point eight five zero bar then the mass of the solute is given the mass of the solute is 0 0.5 gram mass of the solute is 0 0.5 gram that is w 2 is equal to 0 0.5 gram next is your benzene is given what is the mass of benzene that is mass of benzene that is w 1 is equal to 78 gram then molar mass of benzene, molar mass of benzene then it is this is 39 is given the data is 39 w 1 is 39 and m 1 is mass of mass of molar mass of benzene. And this your m 2 molar mass of the solute. the vapor pressure changes to p 1 p 1 is equal to 0 0.847 845 0 0.845 these are the data is given what is the molar mass of benzene benzene has the formula c 6 this is the benzene its mass is c 6 h 6 means that will be equal to 12 into 6 plus 6 that is equal to 78. The molar mass of the benzene is equal to 78. By putting all these values in this expression, you put all the values in this expression, then m 2 will be equal to w 2 is 0 0.5 gram. 
m 1 is 78, p 1 0 is 0 0.845 divided by w 1, w 1 is 39 mass of solvent into delta p, delta p means p 1 0, delta p is equal to p 1 0 minus p 1 that will be equal to 0 0.850 minus 0 0.845 that will equal 0 0.005 this is 0 0.005. Now, we will calculate what is the mass of the molar mass of the solute. So, these are the data given this is the expression you put the value of w 2 m 1 p 1 0 w 1 delta p then you will calculate what is the molar mass what is the molar mass of the solute in the solution. Then elevation in boiling point elevation in boiling point we will go to elevation in boiling point elevation in boiling point whenever a non volatile solute is added to a solvent when a non volatile solute is added to a solvent what happens according to Raoult's law the vapor pressure decreases. So, vapor pressure of the solution decreases. So, as the vapor pressure decreases we know that what is the definition of the boiling point the definition of the boiling point is the temperature at which vapor pressure becomes equal to atmospheric pressure. When vapor pressure become equal to atmospheric pressure the boiling start as the vapor pressure decreases with the addition of a non volatile solute the more amount of heat is required to boil a solution. So, the boiling point increases the boiling point increases and the since the lowering in vapor pressure depends on the mole fraction of the solute similarly the elevation in boiling point also depends on the number of subtle part solute particle present. So, this is your elevation in boiling point whenever a non volatile solute is added to a solvent when a non volatile solute is added to a solvent I have given a graph on the uh, I have given a graph on the slide. So, when you add some non volatile solute the vapor pressure decreases as the vapor pressure decreases the boiling point decreases increases. So, elevation in boiling point if T b 0 is the boiling point of boiling point of pure solvent and T b is the boiling point of boiling point of the solution then then elevation in boiling point then elevation in boiling point delta T b will be equal to T b minus T b 0. This elevation in boiling point delta T b is directly proportional to the mole molar frac mole fraction of the solute is directly proportional to is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute or to the molar concentration this delta b is directly proportional to delta t b is directly proportional to the molality molality of the solution the directly proportional to the molality of the solution or delta t b will be equal to k b into m m is the molality of the solution m is the small m is the molality of the solution the k b the proportionality constant is called your K b is called K b is molal elevation constant K b is molal elevation constant K b is molal elevation constant we also called it as we also called it as the ebullioscopic constant we also call it as ebullioscopic constant. If you know the molar mass, if you, if you know the boiling point elevation, then you can also calculate what is the molar mass of the solute. The unit of K b is Kelvin 
into kg per mole unit of kb unit is kelvin kg mole inverse this is the unit of the molar elevation constant or ebullioscopic constants so molar what is molality molality is the number of moles of solute present in 1000 kg of the present in 1000 kg of the solvent so what is molality molality is m is is the molality of solution molality m is the molality of the solution so this is all about today's um uh, two days the study of the solution we have already cover the raoult's law the henry's law solution what is solution types of solution then vapor pressure then relative lowering in vapor pressure then how we will calculate the molar mass of a solute by using the measurement of relative lowering in vapor pressure now we are the kb lb uh, that is your uh, elevation in boiling point the elevation in boiling point then how then the only coming class will go to how to calculate the molar mass of from the elevation in boiling point thank you students